EG in the previous game. And I felt like the two things that stand out to me was next to the Bristol like middle in a one-on-one -on -one against Viper, he didn't really have the greatest time in, in that matchup. Right. Uh, the other thing that felt kind of like an issue for EG was that you had Les Shrug as a support. I, I do not think the hero can shine that much, even though Aoi played really, really good on the hero. I just think it's not the position for Lesh Rock. All right, well, look at this. I mean, looking at the bans already for game number three, the Lesh now finally being banned out on the side of Secret, and then there's the Naga ban from Secret 2. Naga, of course, a high priority here in the finals. I mean, some really big plays. In there, game we two. there we go. The there we go. There we go. I'm honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see that in the last match. I mean, given given how close Team, uh, team Secret came in the first game to, to pulling that out, despite what we all felt was a, a pretty pretty moderate outdraft. Well, I think we, we really touched upon that, though, when we said, yeah, sure, even if it's not Shaker, EG still went for a similar pick style, and it ended up not working, so they said, all right, fine, let's really change things up. Now, Shadow Fiend pick up on Dire's side. Yeah, but they, they've got... It's it's just as much as a deny pick, I think. Leaving yeah, them, a, like, uh, for instance, giving them Earthshaker Shadow Fiend right now when they're on the Radiant side of things would have been way too much to overcome, I think. And look, people talk about Arteezy Shadow Fiend for good reason. He and Sumail certainly uh, both have, have sort of pioneered that hero, bringing it back into the metagame. But don't forget, S4 was once one of the best Shadow Fiends in the world as well. So they have two incredibly talented players. Yeah, and, and in terms of taking that away, of course, Sumail just shining on that Shadow Fiend. Huge play earlier today and there we go clockwork now finally back in the game on the side of EG along with the dazzle I would say a fairly common opening yeah. for for the side of EG here yes you could argue for a mid hero like the shadow fiend but now it's it's obviously taken away and as well as you have bans on Leshrug and Queen of Pain which would be a considered other opening well I mean PPD and puppy also just absolutely incredible on the dazzle over the last couple of weeks this is a little unusual <laughs> I, I raised my eyebrows a little bit at the ban of keeper of the light in the last draft but i mean secret valuing it incredibly highly taking it up the number two it was eg that showed us the farming dire keeper of the light in the summit three maybe team secret thinking something similar yeah well, has to be banned or taken yes, by eg yes. i think and then Next I also place. think uh, Bristleback has been shown a bit too much love uh, in yeah. this tournament. I think this might be the tournament that shows that Bristleback is slowly being f faded out of the, the meta game as well. It's, I, I would be interested to see a stat on I its win rate in this tournament. I because like every game I watch, it feels like it's losing. I, I still feel like the, the, the problem with Bristleback is maybe teams have figured out how to play against him. Mm. But also, in, in what scenario he gets gets into yeah. into play you have a mid match up bristol against viper yeah, yeah. I mean, just, he it's, brought that up it's I, just not that great they just sacked fear in that game they they sacked fear mid and it, i think at one point uh viper was like ahead in cs like 48 to 16 yeah over the bristol but it, it was just a sack i mean they they got a lot for sumail top early on but yeah i mean fear never really got back in the game well it's also just not that good versus tusk because he locks you in with the frost shards and then you're forced to like <laughs> run back into the enemy team and if tusk, you don't you're not really doing anything and we've seen this more rise in popularity in, in Razor, especially from these two teams. So another hero that True. There you sort go. of just completely nullifies the prison pack. Yeah, uh, they still don't want to deal with that storm, though, of course. I mean, sure, you won the game, but oh, all right, we gave it up last game. Let's just make sure that we can get that win in game number three, along with the clinks ban, too, from the side of Secret. Yeah, I also like the brood ban a lot by EG. Uh, we haven't seen it in, in the recent past. Uh, but boy, the the Zai Broodmother just is is absolutely terrifying when he gets early room on the hero. It's two very good bands on the side of, of of Secret here for protection of the Keeper of the Light. Mm -hmm. You have Klinks as well as Storm that can right. just jump on uh, that it, it, on that fairly fragile hero. This is a Siren pickup, right? It must be. The oh, I, oh no, band. Band down. Band. Oh, it's band, second yeah. band. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. I like how uh, EG never loses sight of the Broodmother. I, I think a lot of teams just let that slip through like maybe once every six or seven games, like, oh crap, we forgot to ban it in the second phase. But PBD is very vigilant about that and never forgets to ban it. To be fair, there, there, there are not a lot of even decent teams that would forget about the Brood against, uh, against Secret. Yeah, I mean, but especially, I mean, we've seen that quite a few times that we saw uh, lots of heroes slipping through just because of how diverse the pool is right now for all teams.
And so this is this is why this finals is so interesting for everyone. I mean, it's an absolute mind game, a real good insight into how these teams prepare, and of course, how their drafters go about their thought process against each other. I I, I still do believe that Bristolbeck is fairly high on the on on both the the drafters' really? minds. I I think a Coddle is a pretty decent counter to it, just because of the mana league that you, that you can put on top. Off the Bristol. I actually this, like this bounty hunter pick a lot. Uh, Cotter and Shadowfiend are both heroes that have a, a hard time dealing with him. Yeah. You can get off oh, some. Oh, okay. Some okay. No, no, no. If they, yeah, yeah, yeah. To disrupt the jungle stacking on the dire side is what you're saying. Dead and they're easy, easy pickups. Okay. Right. I mean, and that's kind of been the theme so far throughout, throughout this tournament. It's like, all right, well, the early pressure, how's it going to come? Just make sure they can't roam about freely and just play a little safer in that jungle. We talked about that in the drafting phase of game two also. And now with the Clink's gone, Bounty Hunter was still open, EG taking that to secure that part of their strategy. We saw in, in the seeding stakes of the tournament that Bounty Hunter really wasn't very effective or, mm -hmm. and lost a lot more games than it won. But in this particular case so far, I think it, it has a lot of potential in this game. No, I think it, I, I think it nicely disrupts a lot of what Secret are going to try to do with those first two heroes. The question on my mind right now is, is what's the male's hero? Because you've got the Storm, the Leshrac, the Queen of Pain, and the Shadow Fiend all off the board. Uh, those are his four best heroes, probably. If they get a big enough uh, carry for fear, I think he could maybe even play a Zeus. I think Zeus has showed a lot of strength oh, yeah. in game two mm -hmm. in the hands of S4 and, and generally is a hero with a lot of firepower, especially yeah. early on. You can get some good kills with the bounty hunter, the clockwork. I think a juggernaut could be something on the side of EG to consider for fear. And then you can leave the fifth pick open to the mid for some mail. Yeah, the Zeus okay. is a good call. The uh, Sumail has, I think, two of the top three GPMs ever achieved on Zeus. All right, and the Rubik also slipping through with a couple of these other more situational bands in terms of the final specifically uh, coming through. It's not too surprising if you know Kuro and Poppy's history together. If you go back to TI3, I believe, I think this was the support combo they were looking to pick up in every game that they played, especially aren't. when they then went up against the Lions in that famous final. Well, and, and also, it, despite, we talked about the Bounty Hunter mainly in the context of disrupting uh, what Team Secret's going to try to do in the dire jungle, but of course, you know, Rubik lets you turn that track advantage kind of on its head. Absolutely. So both teams now really playing a lot more spontaneously in terms of the draft here. Of course, already in the third game, tied 1-1 between Team Secret and Evil Geniuses. You can't just go head on with a preset plan. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to what Sumil plays. There's been a lot of Lash Rack, a lot of Queen of Pain, a lot of Shadow Fiend. I think one hero that we haven't seen, that we have seen recently, is Tinker. Um, yeah. And it, you can definitely make use of the vision from Bounty Hunter, but I, he always plays a hero that scales really well into late. I had that on my mind from the very first pick. After I've seen the Shadow Fiend, I felt like it could be a, a pretty good good hero to pick up. It's just, in a one-on-one, -on -one, if Shadow Fiend is middle, Tinker crushes that hero on Rocket Laser Bow. Mm. Now this this would be a signature hero for fear. For yeah, sure. I, I wonder. It it's, it would seem a little odd to me that they would they would switch up Sumail so much. But I wonder. You've seen S4 have a lot of success with a mid Sven. I wonder if EG might be pulling a little bit of a wild card. The the reason I mentioned Jugger earlier was because I was trying to look towards a dual lane that can. You, you, they can kind of zone out an offlaner mm -hmm. with just with the two heroes alone, and Sven is just the better in that case. I, I, did, I didn't think too much of it, but if you see Dazzle by Sven and Sven, these two heroes can zone out an offlaner quite easily. Okay, so you're still, you're still on board with the fierce Sven here in a duel lane with the I, I, yeah. I do think so. Definitely. Yeah, right. I think that's right. It sounds good. Sven getting some love here in the finals, and Darks here. It's been the with, last band. I agree with Bendo. Tinker is a very interesting pick here. I think uh, it could really, really shine in this matchup. Do you think Secret maybe possibly thinks that far and tries to just ban it out and see what else EG has? I mean, because we're racking our brains to see what he's going to pick, and then we finally came to the Tinker. I mean, as he used utility in both the Zeus and, and the Tinker, I'd be surprised if it was in, anything else than those two. Zeus? I, I don't think they have enough. I, I don't like the damage. I just feel like you, you would want to work around Either disable or more physical damage okay. on a, with, with a, death, a death together. All right, well, last bands matter quite a bit, as we've seen, especially when you have these two teams together. It's really about kind of throwing each other off their game before the game even starts. I mean, as far as the playstyle goes, EG has to bring the fight to Secret. Like, Secret, they're going to be very content with farming passively, stacking up the jungle right. for Shadow Fiend, Keeper, and Darkseer. And I, I, I think Evil Genius just relies on kills a lot more with the Clockwork, with the Bounty Hunter. So I think something aggressive as suits Sumail's playstyle. 
What about Lena? Right. Lena's also good. Bring back Lena, okay. even though what, what you? the item nerf. I was even considering, what do you think of Puck here? I've seen him play Puck a decent amount, but the problem with Puck is he tends to fall off, I would say, like 30, 35 minutes after the Blink Yules pick up. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's good if you can keep getting kills. There we go. Uh, there there we go. The Tinker's left open. Tinker gets picked up by EG. Crowd roaring. And I, I mean, the numbers that Sunail put up uh, on Tinker at DAC were, were just sick. I mean, he had some of the highest damage numbers per minute ever achieved in the game on any hero playing Tinker. Uh, I mean, he gets going on this hero, and I mean, you think his storm is exciting. What do you see? <laughs> and I yeah. can tell you, with a, especially with a bounty under. Secret needs to protect middle. If, if Shadowfin is middle on the side of Dire, it, it, it's very, very difficult well, but for Shadowfin to But the only on one that can really do that is Kuroki, right, on the Rubik. He, he can kind of babysit him, but yeah, I also feel like he has to. Yeah, exactly, but Keeper of the right. Light can't really do anything, and Darkseid is obviously the offlane hero. But at the same time, when you when you have a bounty roam, and Rubik needs to sit somewhere, and usually he tends to stack at the same time, a bounty hunter that is next to sitting next to a Rubik, a bounty hunter doesn't care. He just hits him down. Yeah, yeah expensive openings. I think uh, the lineup so far from Evil Genius as part of last pick of Team Secret really favors EG. But this is where I actually really go back to the fact that you, you can now easily sl slide the SF back over into the safe lane and pick up a more uh, a more self-sufficient mid here. Maybe. I mean, True. we've seen that work for both of these teams I mean, quite could, a bit. That's you could an, pick, pick an S4 puck. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. I think it's still really point, tough with Bounty Hunter versus Tinker. Like, Tinker doesn't lose that many one-on-one -on -one matches, maybe to, like, Viper or something like that. But I'm not sure if they want to swing that route. Right. And Razor, then? That does Viper's banned out. Yeah, I mean, oh, Viper's right. banned out. So that out. explains okay. a lot. Right. I mean, that's why that Viper was banned out by EG. And so, not I too many options. I, I also think that the problem with putting a putting oh, a SF... All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, after much contemplation, we're going to see that anti-mage come back out for Team Secret. Another interesting draft phase, another excellent game coming up. Game number three between EG and Team Secret in the Grand Finals. We're tied 1-1. Let's find out who takes the lead again as we throw over to our casters for game number three. Thank you very much. Yes, it is time for game number three. Team Secret versus Evil Geniuses. I hope you're prepared. Uh, I know I'm chilling myself out right now. I'm, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit scared here. Evil Geniuses, so I like the fact that um, the analysts on the desk early on, they brought up the fact that um, they kind of seemed like an agreement among all of them that they felt like Evil Geniuses need to slightly outdraft Team Secret in order to take a win. And I, and I feel like going into this finals, that was the way I was looking at it too. Can PPD essentially outdraft Team Secret in order to provide Evil Geniuses a win? Because I feel like team, right now, Team Secret are just operating slightly better than E in game. I'm looking at this draft and I like the Tinker last pick. It was definitely interesting and probably surprised Team Secret, but still, Team Secret have this nice all around draft that you're going to see a lot. I mean, very natural pickups through and through. S4 Shadow Fiend, you've got a Universe Darks here, and even the Animage RTZ knows this hero, obviously, through and through everyone does. And it's going to be a pretty hard counter, potentially, to the Tinker. <laughs> ah, and the trash talk begins between the teams. You wouldn't expect anything less than RTZ facing <laughs> up his former team. <laughs> There's already a little bit of, uh, of uh, tit and tat going back and forth between inside the lobby, but it really is father versus son, fear versus RTZ in so many different ways. And, uh, well, Zai, maybe not exactly where he wants to be, as uh, he's down here on the bottom lane, being stalked up, and uh, there's your attack from Aoi, just to slow him down with the Orb of Venom, but they weren't getting range for Fear to get the Storm Bolt off in time, so there is no real follow-up to this. But let's have a bit of a peek through our lanes. So it will be an off-lane Universe Clockwork, as you said. It couldn't be any more comfortable for him. Artiz, he already had a really great performance with his Anti-Mage earlier. He'll be taking that role into the safe lane, and being babysat by Koro, who is that role as Rubik. That puts S4 into towards the middle lane up against Sumail's Tinker. Uh, we'll have a roaming Aoi bounty hunter. And then the, capping off the EG lineup, PPD on his ever so saving Dazzle and Fear in his signature role as Ven up against the offlane Zai Darkseer. Uh, puts Puppy onto Keeper of the Light and S4 is the final hero. And that will be middle lane as the Nevermore or Shadow Fiend. Sorry, so I went to Warcraft. Early on, take a look at what the universe it does. He managed to get the perfect positioning in order to get the Cogs block off into this small little area with two different creeps. Uh, that's pretty much perfect timing 
there from Universe. You can't really get much more than that with an off-lane clockwork on Radiant's side. He does it beautifully, and the lane will push Zai into trouble. his favor. Bottom lane, the Stormbolt's going to come in. They're trying to get around him for the heel bomb, and there it is. Oh, Zai's in wow. trouble. And first blood spilt by evil geniuses. That's what they tried to do previously when he was just walking down the lane. Never underestimate the power or damage of heal. Yeah, and this is something that, while well, I was mentioning earlier, that the Tinker may be countered out by the Animage. Obviously, he's a heavy intelligence, high mana pool hero who can be potentially blown up by that Animage mana void. The Spin could have a very good game this time around. Fear last time was kind of just completely trashed when it came to, like, laning up against a Viper. That was just a laning phase decision that they decided to basically make him the three position. And because of that, he didn't manage to have that much of an impact. Universe top lane picked up, thrown back, as He's done all the hard work. Kuro doesn't have an extra level, but with a range attack, that'll be enough. Nice. Artiz, he blinks forward. Then revenge built by Secret Wall. S4 in middle lane. Laser and Rocket Bill coming in from the Tinker. Honey's going to have a grin on his face after watching this. And after that, you've got AUI immediately being able to counter the counter that was placed down. Now Team Secret are very exposed in that middle lane, and Puppy may just have to throw down another counter. We're sure enough, they're going to go for it. It's already taken out instantly, using the Tangos to eat away that one. But still, S4 feeling that pressure, and now they're going to go in another Tango Eat of the Counter Ward. Puppy's going to be forced into buying more, but he doesn't have the gold for it. No, he does not. But at least they can control the runes for the moment. As the top one will be taken out by the Rubik, but the double damage goes into a Darkseer. That's not really going to help him much at all. Uh, and on the middle lane, S4, it's just a horrendous lane for him when you think about it. You get lasered down. It's a, it's a level 2 laser, so you hear a blind duration is down to 3.5, but you have this blind, which your max is 4.5 seconds. The Shadow Fiend cannot attack a last a, a, a unit. He has to use his razors, but then some mail laser rockets again. Level 2, the damage is there. there. It is. It's a simple chip, and all he needs is just that little bit of assistance to come in from the Bounty Hunter, and that means Owie's also leeching out the levels when this happens. Yeah, and with the Tinker rapidly getting ahead in experience over this SF, his nukes are just going to overwhelm SF's HP pool every single time he comes down to lane. Now, the SF still has plenty of opportunities. He's one of the most known mids to be able to make a comeback after a heavy amount of ganks, uh, purely because his farming speed is insane with those uh, three different races available to him. The problem is, he still doesn't have, he needs to get level three shots raise before he's independent of his physical right clicks uh, right now he still needs to actually right click to get cs and this is where the laser is going to hurt him quite heavily he does have one upside though and that's the fact that the dark seal zai doesn't have to come off the off lane if zai was having a really hard time he'd probably be looking to take a lot of the stacks like puppy's already worked himself up a triple stack oh, inside the zai. dark jungle oh hello bottom lane but fear can't get to him in time he did pop the war cry but it wasn't enough uh but yeah you don't have to actually try and contest like fight over your own jungle for the stack so if S4, if they feel like he needs it, they'll just send him up there to take it. But Owie, he's on the hunt. He'll be watching this very closely. So Puppy's going to be careful as he th throws out the Illumina. At least he hits Owie on the way through. Doesn't get a single last hit. So Owie doesn't leech anything, but he does at least ping out the triple stack. And now, in fact, he's going to take out oh, quite a large chunk of experience. But yeah, he's sitting on the tip of it. So he does take the damage. Yeah, if AUI actually wasn't hurt, hit by that first Illuminate Blast, he probably would have gone for the attempted go on the Keeper of the Light. Even if he couldn't kill him, he'd actually at least force him back to Fountain. Owie. Well, that sentry was down for the Dire side. Kuro's right next to him, but obviously he's got no idea that Owie is standing next to him. And the PPD PP. even rotates him with. So there's three heroes now arriving in for EG up and, against S4. And with the Bounty Hunter potentially being able to start out right next to an ally, they can actually get a double nuke there. The right click, the shuriken, as well as a shadow wave heal. Could be a decent amount of burst damage, but they decide against it. He just heals up AY a little bit, and he will go back to roaming into the Keeper of Light's jungle. Now, notice because of the fact that they're actually rotating the Rubik around quite a bit, and they also have a Keeper of the Light who's focusing more on jungling than anything else, yes, our Darkseer isn't getting much, uh, or he's getting a lot of experience in that bottom lane, but so is Universe. Yeah. And the Darkseer with levels, we saw, well, sorry, uh, Zai having a great old time, Universe with the Clockwork, yeah, they're both four and four. And both of these heroes, like, it's, it's a little bit more essential that the Darkseer oh, finds more levels. And, uh, yep, he's pretty low, but oh. S4, he actually hit the raise from that rage while on top lane, Arteezy, trying to survive against the battery assault, unable to do so. So it is a call for a core trade-off. 
I mean, I think that's almost worth it. Losing the Tinker is a huge loss, but then being able to get an Animage kill so early on to this game is huge for Evil Geniuses. I can't believe they found that opening. S4 obviously very happy with the amount of experience they picked up from that kill. We'll now jump into that level 6 and we'll start snowballing with that farm, whether he's able to utilize the lane that much or if he feels enough pressure, obviously, go into the jungle and farm that one up. Puppy may just have, both Puppy as well as Universe may just have to give that up because S4 is the highest priority farm right now behind RTZ. Yeah, they need, they need him to be strong. And well, he's probably not even going to get the six minute rune on bottom. He's on top of Aoi, but who's going to get the rune? And it actually goes to the Shadow Fiend. But Aoi starts his attack. Race number one, race number two. Sentry oh, was down. He can see him perfectly. Just race number three does the work at S4. Punishing Aoi on that bounty hunter. Very greedy play from AY, and he gets punished quite heavily for it. Now, the S4 Shadow Fiend is getting pretty out of control now. It's going to be up to Universe as the next one to step up for that. Bounty Hunter provided pressure for the first five minutes, but he can't really do much now. Now he needs to actually try and get his level six in order to, to use, start utilizing that track goal to help Evil Geniuses get ahead in kills. And it's going to be Universe, once he gets that hook shot, who's going to be able to put pressure on S4 instead. <laughs> Again, the counter of the Sentry Ward in mid. <laughs> the battle for the Invis Vision is real. But obviously, you can always just come in and get rid of it if you know where it is. Uh, Puppy still farming up. Just playing around with the Mud Golems for now. And now he, in fact, leaves an Observer Ward behind. In fact, Puppy throws down one of his Sentry Wards. So we can see when Aoi comes in range. Now, Aoi is running the edge of the vision. And he moves over. Universe does not have Hookshot. In fact, he is one creep away from having Hookshot. But he gets in range for the Battery Assault over on Puppy with the Rocket and the extra attack. They will find the damage. But Arteezy, yeah, he's not going in any deeper. Universe will bottle up. And back it up. There's no way RTZ can find a kill there. Note, note also that uh, Clockwork did go for the maxed out battery assault build. Sometimes you see a second level in Rocket Flare just to help ensure easy CS. But he's facing an Animage. He's low on mana anyway, so he wants to max out the kill potential, particularly against such a high value target like the SF. That's probably the only way you can get an advantage back inside the lane, finding pickoffs like this. Owie stalking S4. Obviously, with the Observer Ward, he's already got the extra information. And S4 might be watching himself very closely too to see this experience tick. Because when it does happen, you can work it out. Bottom lane, Telekis pick up, Fear being dragged back. Gets a stun on Zai, but that's not going to save his life. Support from PPD. He was just a little bit too far away. I don't know if he's going up to actually look for the eight minute room, but Secret found the perfect gap in EG's defense. Yeah, that's the nighttime advantage of oh, it. Oh, no. Actually missed it. They started a duel from the high ground to low ground, but Universe with a haste rate. He's running up to S4 with a battery assault, and then with a double TP and says, This isn't a great idea. Then realized, wait, no, it's Zai who came in. Koro, the second one, he oversees Welcome with a Telekin to pick up. All he wants to do is force S4 back behind that tier one tower where AY will be able to strike with that level three shuriken. He could get it now, but it would die. baby sitting in so close. Yeah. And the bottles just arrived too, so he's not going to find the damage required to get the kill. And meanwhile, Arteezy almost finished that tier one tower on top lane. Universe will come in. And Arteezy, well, he's got the choice to contest for it. The fortification will be there, stopping the catapult from getting the last hit. And there goes that tier one tower being denied. Arteezy says it's just not worth his farm. Because he's also trying to stay on time for that battle fury as the anti-mage. It's the whole goal of him. He's meant to be bigger than the Tinker ever will be. Yeah, you're hoping to look at maybe a 15-minute Battle Fury as kind of average timing after your treads. And RTZ is definitely on mark for that one. It's a really nice pickup from Kuro. He just stole level 1 Shadow Walk. Obviously not great as level 1, but it'll give him the ability to try and find someone inside the Radiant Jungle, and that can set up for a gank with Puppy and Zai. And in fact, they're actually going to bring an extra help. S4 is moving down, and this is not visible by any Radiant Ward. And in fact, if Kuro walks around the corner now, he'll probably scout at Universe. There's a lot of support coming down to Zai. Hawk shot in. Puppy, is he going to start the Illumin? Already use it. In fact, it's on cooldown. Fear triggering the God Strength. The Cogs are up, and with the Bolt, they'll kill him off. But Fear being picked up. Raise number one, the Illumin. Oh, hits the from Puppy. Perfect time in Universe. Still alive. The six touches are there, but the attack from S4 will hit its mark. The tracks are up from Aoi. They're chasing after Kuro. Not to mention the rest of them. And Kuro turns around. He actually stole Stormbolt, put down the Sentry Ward, hoping that Aoi would continue the chase, but he does not do so. The Stormhammer steal there from Kuro is what won that fight. Being able to throw it out onto the Sven, it also hits the Clockwork at the same time, gave them that extra kill that wins the fight. 
as it is. Once again, both of these teams rotating around quite early on just because of the draft and maybe just because of the meta we're seeing in this current tournament, but so much of that 10 to 20 minute marker is very important to try and win, so we're seeing a lot of rotations. Not many heroes are actually just AFK farming as we would see maybe in just so much as two months ago. The only one who's really doing that would be Arteezy, and obviously that's just the job of an Animage, just to try and get that Battle Fury as quick as possible. Yeah, but the difference is between, like, like what you're talking about, game number one and game number two, we saw all the rotations, but there weren't that many engagements. It was always just holding back until there was probably one of the big fights, but there's a lot more kill potential with the heroes in this game. Hence, we have 12 kills within the space of 11 minutes. So we've actually had more death and destruction within the first, well, 11 minutes of this game than we probably have if you combine up both game number one and game number two. But the trade-off is buildings are still alive. We're 11 minutes in and only one tier one tower has dropped. Universe moving forward. S4, he sees him. The dust will trigger. Zai expecting that Aoi was on top of him, but it's not the case. They leave an observer ward behind. Meanwhile, Kuro is having some fun with DPD on the bottom lane. The double TPs are coming in, and Kuro got to be careful. That's the man with BTs up. Lays up with the storm bolt. He'll get it off with a telekinesis, but Kuro knew he was dead. Universe Poppy Illumin. More. Uh, Samalia probably shouldn't be there for the Illumin to hit. Meanwhile, Air S4 goes for the Requiem of Souls. Back, back in the wall. Owie's low. Man avoid from Arteezy. Finds a kill and fear. So low, Arteezy blink one second away, but the heal will be keeping him alive. That's fear running away. The Dazzle Weave was also having an effect, so it's high armor to get through. Clockwork, Universe. It was having a, a look at Arteezy, but didn't want to go any further. Yeah, I love the fact that Arteezy was actually willing to make that rotation because at this point you want to make sure that evil geniuses do not find too many pickoffs and don't go unpunished for trying to go for the, those early track gold kills. So I love the fact he was willing to actually rotate around despite the fact that he hasn't actually finished up that battle for you just yet. Counter warding wars being placed, but Universe has snatched Puppy. Yeah, they pick him up, throw him out, that gets him out of the cogs, but Puppy still being pushed out and then heal bombed. Is the universe who does find the kill, and that's going to help him get that blade mill up very, very quickly. And while all this is going on, Samael's already picked up his BT, Soul Ring, Bottle, Null Talisman, everything a good Tinker needs, but he's also got 1900 gold. This Blink Dagger is going to start to come up, and as far as chasing a very high maneuverable Tinker, Secret don't really have great abilities for this. Because what are you going to get? You got you got Blink Anti Mage. He's not going to be able to chase the Tinker when he can, can rearm his own Blink Dagger. And um, the Surges, Illuminus, Blinding Light. Like there's a couple of things here and there, but nothing really changes over ch chases over a distance. Yeah, the Blinding Light later on to the game will definitely be a very critical factor. Um, but the same problems when it comes to uh, catching out the the Tinker on the side of Team Secret also happens with EG in trying to catch out Arteezy's Anti Mage. Right? They actually do not have that much lockdown. Clockwork is in particular particularly strong there. It's namely just the Sven Stormhammer. That's your longest duration stun to control that Animage. So the Fear really needs to, to get ahead in farm and he's already felt a lot of pressure that has kept his net worth right around the middle of these 10 players. Which is not where he wants to be. He wants to have that Mask of Madness, go into the BKP, be a huge warrior during the fights. But he's not getting it at the moment. Dire Observe fought down by Koro. The amount of wards that have been killed off during this game is unbelievable. Uh, he de wards out EG's ward, which is looking on the other side of the, of the tree line, so that understand who is attacking and how many of them are attacking into that tier one tower on bot. And they realize, okay, we have no vision. They probably have it themselves. We're not going to find a kill on bot lane. So instead, rotate up, maybe find a kill on S4, but it's exactly at the same time as he moves into his jungle. Everyone goes missing, and Secret just hold defensively. Yeah, I said early on that Fear could have a really good game as this Sven because I feel like the Sven is a pretty good carry versus both the SF as well as the Animage. You've got yourself at least a disabled... Oh, they know where he is. S4, they're right on top of him. Now they start with a weave, but already the recall's coming with a hook shot in from Universe. They can't pull him in in time. S4 being hogged up, pulled down, and brought down. 36 seconds on the sideline. But the trade-off will be the Tier 1 tower on bottom lane. Well, I'd say that if the Creep Wave could survive through the March of the Machines, of Samael and maybe even Arteezy. Yep, there's your blink dagger up from Samael. Arteezy in the trees just trying to stay hidden for the moment. He got a 13 minute battle fury. He's already starting into the same build he did previously and that's the Vladimir's offering. Yeah, look what Arteezy is doing. He's using the battle fury which does have that active now to be able to eat through trees. If he actually finds somehow the tinker, he can control him and easily take him out. Tra Ooh, okay, I was about to say track kill, but Aoi didn't go in with a Shuri toss as well, so Fear didn't have time to get in range for the Stormbolt. It looks like that's what he was committing to after triggering the Warcry. 
And they still take the tier one tower, EG. With nine to seven, there's not much in this under 2,000 gold as well as experience the difference between the teams. S4 saw the TP down the bottom lane. He's just trying to force it. Take out the creep wave, beat him to the tower. But the rocket spam as well as taking damage from the tower is not a healthy way for S4 to do this push. And in fact, now with a clockwork rocket coming in, Universe is hook shots out of range. You can't reach anyone from secret. And the Observed Ward's also watching most of the movement from EG. Note that the mo more popular build of SF nowadays, which is Mech BKB, is actually being surpassed here from S4 with Yule Scepter. Yule Scepter does a, a couple of different things for you. First of all, Yule Scepter will help a little bit to deal with the Clockwork Blade Mail that has been picked up. Obviously, Mech and, and, Blade, uh, Mech and BKB would do that too. I think the most notable factor, though, is going to be picking off the Tinker. This actually allows the SF to potentially solo out this Tinker multiple times. Times. If he gets a Blink Dagger, catches him, Yules, obviously the Shadow Requiem is going to do most of the damage on Tinker. It pretty much eliminates him right there. That could be a really good way for them to hunt him down. SF on one side, Animage on the other, and just look for that opening on the Tinker, who you know is going to be split pushing these lanes. Mm -hmm. I want to watch Puppy too. You talk about Tinker also split pushing. When does this Aghanims arrive? 1,200 goals on Puppy. Do you just try and rush? for the Aghanims in this game? Or do you think, okay, I need to go utility items. I need a four staff up against someone like a Clockwork. Um, I don't think a four staff would be bad for being able to save your allies. I, oh, I would actually... Wow! Oh, okay. No. That was a little bit off. Misses the hook shot and then gives the hook shot over to Koro. Yeah, you can't afford to make those kind of errors just because the, the track old obviously makes that kill worth so much more. And then on top of that, we're talking about the potential agonims or what have you for the Keeper of the Light. Shutting well, down his farm is not the most paramount thing for evil geniuses. Kuro is still tracked up on the back lines and S4 moves forward. Well, he sees the EG Kuro moving forward and fear. Stormbolt, maybe he can kill off Kuro with one swipe, two. Okay, well, that'll do it. With the rocket also helping out, s falls on the run, but fear moving so quickly back behind that tier two tower. Stormbolt in two in four seconds time. A little bit too far away, but the rocket's still coming. S4, able nice to regenerate the time. No. That's going to go down, but Puppy, now he's in trouble with the Stormbolt connecting on both. They've got the movement speed because of the track, but still a two for one, and RTZ's joined the fight. The back into a three-man wall and the illusion. Alien 18 HP, the illusion from Darkseid will get the kill. Samael try and dodge as much as he possibly can around the tree lines. The surge is up, he's deeping out between the trees, and oh, he's found no. Arteezy finding the mark, finding another kill, going three for one on this end, mate. This that is, was this all side, though. That could have been such a better engagement if RTZ had actually used his He's going for more. There. He's going for Universe, burning off the map, taking a lot of damage as well to do it because the Blade Melba blinks up, looking to chase. But doesn't want to go too far. Dazzle is right behind him. So essentially, Zai came in and hit that three-man vacuum. That was an excellent opportunity. He was trying to set up RTZ for a mana void. If he'd actually mana voided all three of them with putting it on, I think the Tinker probably had about half mana. It would have done a sizable amount of damage, killing two probably almost instantly. And then they could have chased down the Sven as well. Still, though, an excellent fight for Team Secret as evil geniuses just simply get a little bit too overly aggressive, trying to use that movement speed advantage of the track to chase down multiple heroes while they're deep into the Tier 2 tower area. Man, they can get really punished for this too because with this kill with, well, with the multiple kills Arteezy now has a plate of alacrity this Yash is going to be coming up a lot quicker in fact he does pick up the band of Elskin and almost has enough money to finish the full Yash up but Keeper of the Light is having all the space in the world to farm up in the jungle he's got 1200 gold after picking up the point booster and even Koro He's still walking around with arcane boots. He stole Shadow Wave from PPD and doesn't even really need a Blink Dagger. Even the way he stole that Shadow Wave, Zai surges him in so he can get in range to get the steal. You keep the Crete Waves up, you keep your teammates alive, and you have many options as far as Secret's initiation goes. But initiation just got better for EG. A Blink Dagger is now on their vent, and they instantly move into a smoke with PPD. Yeah, pretty much a necessity if you want to be able to lock down this Animage a bit better. So the Blink in the preemptive gone strength that they're trying oh, to gank the Animage. Smoke, animates. where's the dust? S4. Oh. The smoke broke, he triggers the dust, but Owie ran up the river. They saw him because the Dire Observer Ward actually saw him redo the Ghost Walk in the river, but they have no detection. Actually, yes, they do. The Sensory Ward from Cor 
Kuro, pick him up, throw him Ooh. down. Kuro will take the kill very quickly. That was the fade ball, uh, the, the shadow wave going to work. That was an amazing Houdini maneuver from AUI, who simply disappeared from those mass nukes from Secret. And now they're going to utilize this position to try and do Roshan, though I don't think this is a play they can make. It's just a bit too risky. They're certainly on into the game. Yeah, with the hook shots and the ability just for March of the Machines to lock you inside the pit, it's too dangerous. So they just back it up. And they don't, have, they don't have to take the risk. Remember, Arteezy is now level 16 and a half. He is just ripping through this lineup. Well, there's your hook shot going on the middle lane. It's Universe. He's in there with Zai and Kuro with the heal. Actually doing some nice return damage. Talent needs to drag back and Sun into fear. Even Stormbolt being stolen. Hitting in to that pause Sven who cannot keep up. And Zai on 93 life running back in. Maybe he can survive. The track is on him. Okay, he will not survive. Down for the count. The Rockets are also scouting our puppy, but no hook shot available. Fear triggers the wall cry. They want to dive underneath the tier two tower. Universe can tank quite a hefty amount. Goes for the Illumin. Any kind of damage he can do. And S4 lining up the Requiem of Souls. Not really in range, but then again with the raids on the Fear. Universe is still in the trees. Fear, one the attack will get the oh. kill. He flings forward. But Kuro is waiting for him. Gets a sudden owie. And as she steals Shuri Toss. Well, he already threw it. I mean, doesn't have mana for it. So Arteezy can't find any opening. In fact, Aoi kind of hopes that Clockwork can find a rocket to help him out, but that's from one side of the map to the other. Won't work. End of the engagement. But there it is. Still Vlad's Battle Fury. Yasha, soon to be the Manta style, picked up from Arteezy. I simply feel like uh, the rest of Evil Geniuses didn't manage to take enough of a lead to be able to shut down this animation entirely. So now they have to kind of play for late game. They can get some small skirmishes through and through. Arteezy. Universe having a crack at him. Battery Assault. Nice cold pushback. There's still mana, though. For a quick blink away and then TP as well. They're really hoping that Anime which would blink over the river into the hands of AUI, unfortunately. And Teddy blinked into the Roshan pit and TP'd out. Smart play from Arteezy. Well, for now, Arteezy still very happy with his position. Stays alive, doesn't delay the mana style of his. But now he is finding a lot of openings. They're just not being able to capitalize really on it. And PPD can't really help him out either. This guy's got a magic wand as well as Arcane Bruce. In saying that, okay, there's the rest of his islands. I'm like, wait, I'm sure he owns more than what he's got. Uh, and that's why the cloak arrives in with the extra consumables. But he's level 11 on this Dazzle. You know, I was going to talk about some mail and his item choices here. Uh, early on, I was going to ask whether he needs to go for a Scythe of Ice in order to control that animage, or can he go for a little bit of burst damage first? It all kind of depends on how far ahead your Tinker is early on. He went for the Dagon, but he's not going to finish it up and try and go for Dagon 5. It's unnecessary. Instead, now I believe he's going back for the Scythe of Ice in order to try and control AM. Well, if he can do it, but at the same time, then he has to jump and instantly get that Hex off before Arteezy was able to work his way into a BKB. Because that might be his, well, it will be his later game kind of approach to have that long duration BKB Manda for now. In fact, Arteezy's just having a great old time. We, we, I, we, we've seen this before. He moves all through the Radiant Jungle, takes as much of their farm as possible, skips out every single creep wave he possibly can. And, uh, well, there's your blink away. Still going to have that miss chance on him. But he's got support behind. It's Zion, but there's your hook shot in. Can he actually hold him back? Universe Creek. Oh. Push, man. He actually blinks himself away. The small ball will disjoint, and Zai sacrifices himself for the greater Annie Mage, who gets recalled back out to Puppy. That is a, a worthy second. sacrifice. That was just a half a second between Arteezy being able to get away from that storm hammer and it actually landing and him blowing up and that would have been a critical pickoff. Them shutting down his net worth, that actually would have then jumped the tinker ahead in the net worth board. Samel's doing an excellent job keeping up with Arteezy. He can't obviously jungle nearly as efficiently, but he's still keeping the side lanes pushed hard enough that he is getting the necessary late game items to counter this animage. Team Secret are going to reach a certain critical tipping point where using the animage as a sort of five or six slotted carry they kind of have to go all in and try and finish the game before the tinker gets too big but tinker is rapidly putting a timer on team secret i feel with the amount of net worth he's picking up so i'm wondering just how long that time is going to go the split push is not bad but getting into the high ground of secret is not easy and while secret have been able to hold on to quite a fair amount of towers they're finding more pickoff potential. Like S4 blinks himself away from that oh little bottom secret shop, and they recall in. They want to try and fight this one. Where's your surge? Kuro has it, but he cannot get close enough to find an opening. They put down Sentry Wars, hoping they find the bounty hunter there, but it's just not to be the case. S4, who just picked up the blink tail from the side jump shot. in. Arteezy, nope. I thought he might have a little bit of control and uh, go for the mana style burn off into the mana void, but Universe is fine. 
triggers the blade bell and is very, very happy with life. Now the utility of the four staff available for Universe as well. If you can actually get it, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but there is a certain four-staff place you can make against really mobile blinking heroes like the Animage. Essentially, you hook shot, you try and wrap yourself around to the front side of the Animage, cog push him backwards, and then offensively four-staff him to push him into the cog. He's coming for PPD. The Iron Shell's over on Artesis. The burn's going to be real, and Dazzle, well, he'll just run himself away to safety. There's more support. Hook shot missed from Universe again. Zai surged up. And he made the still in the neighborhood, has those mana star illusions, which he'll now trigger, starts burning off the mana there of Universe. And again, EG are forced to fall back. That's just two heroes moving around while S4 is in the jungle farming, and Puppy is also getting closer and closer towards this Aghanim Thepticoddle. And that's also going to help out during daytime. See if you can find the Tinker while he's in the trees. Fear, you'll step the rock, Puppy, bring in help, and it's going to be Koro, and Fear, you're dead. The first real big pickoff of the S4, Blink Dagger and Yule Scepter going into work. And this will allow them to probably take down this Tier 1 tower. Tinker is excellent at being able to defend Tier 1s early on, but with a pickoff like their Sven going down, it just seems unlikely they're going to be able to hold. Or maybe not. Team Secret actually take the opportunity to just spread out and farm. You see the Ancients cleared through by S4 already. Arteezy cutting that top wave as well. They're just trying to keep up as much map pressure on EG as possible. And how long is it going to be before Zven can 100% hit in to the Anti-Mage? He's just picked up a Talisman of Evasion. He doesn't have to finish the full butterfly. It's just having that evasion. While Zven doesn't even have a BKB. They jump down after Owie. They've lost vision, however. And the Dire Sentry Ward just timed out. So Arteezy can't finish the job. All he needed was like... Three more, four more seconds on that ward. And there it is, the Aghanims from the Keeper of the Light. This is going to be insanely hard to deal with. The split push play and counterplay between the Tinker and then the Keeper of the Light and the Annie Mage. They're going to be all over the map, but there's that Scythe of Ice. So now Tinker actually has some catching mechanisms. Whereas before it was just the Annie Mage and the S4 with the Yule Scepter that could have caught the Tinker. Now he's actually able to be offensive onto these heroes. Right. Annie Mage really needs to find that BKB. If they can keep him Hex all the time and just pop off the ma the magical damage, then Arteezy's in a hell of a lot of trouble. Well, remember that Hex no longer removes, it no longer applies that break mechanic, right? So he's True. actually able to still keep the evasion. So going straight for the butterfly will still increase his survivability, but there is a certain amount of danger, right? Just because you're dodging hits when you're Scythe Vice, yep. you still have to think about the fact that he's going to be rearming in you and perma-disabling you. Um, he could do that, and then you can add in Sven. And Sven doesn't have any kind of, like, immunity himself, but if, if Tinker can keep the, con the control up, he can dish out the damage required. Uh, looks like Secret again, they're going to come in for Roche. As, uh, yep, they're just recalling him in. And that's going to be RTZ brought back to the engagement. And EG, at least they're all alive this time around. But they're not really in position for it. Fear's too far away, and Roshan's dying too quickly. So this will be the Agassi mortal. And they really haven't of... given anything up for it. I mean, a little bit of push at top lane, but that's going quickly dealt. Hook shot, that range is too far away. He's not going to make it. They yeah. just give up. There's no way they go for that fight. I mean, that would be a complete suicide play to try and basically steal Aegis and then instantly die again. Universe decides against that. Instead, they're going to try and push pressure up on the top lane where they're expecting a TP to defend. And maybe they can find themselves the pickoff. But here's the thing, Arteezy doesn't care about the top lane. Instead, he just goes straight for the tier one tower in middle. He says, you want that tier one, you can have it. I'm going to trade your middle tier one tower, which is better for me anyway. He actually blinked down to try and attack into Universe. There's an Observer Ward looking up, and now Anime takes a large amount of damage. Where's that extra control? Look at that shot for the stun, the cogs push back. Laser, no mana for a day gone. And Arteezy, mana star, blinks himself away. This is the problem that a Tinker who gets such an early day gone in Scythe, but doesn't have a mana pull to support him. That was such good timing there from Universe. Throwing out the hook shot at the last half second of the Scythe device in order to make sure that there was another Scythe device follow up from Samael. Unfortunately, again, as you said, they just didn't have the mana to throw out all the next round of nukes to finish him off. If I only had Cardinal, they could have given mana. But for now, the Keeper of the Light's working against him and pushing into the Tier 2 tower on bottom lane with the Animage. And um, it's highly unlikely that EG can try and defend this. Even if they do get vision, they're out of position. You have an Animage on the front lines. You've actually got Greaves up as well. And that's coming in from the Darks here, and the tower's gone. Artis does too much damage, has Nagus the Immortal up his sleeve. And with 3,200 gold, actually, he's finished the full Butterfly. He actually finished the full Butterfly. 
Doesn't have extra money for it, but he doesn't care. He's got the Agassi model, so immortality is still his. Yeah, he's sitting at 668 gold per minute. The sixth slot in any mage is going to come in. I mean, he's actually already got the Aegis. He can't afford to get another item, so it might be secret. May just try and utilize this Aegis to take maybe a couple more of their tier, tier 2 towers and hopefully limit the Tinker's mobility a bit more. What do you think about Tinker actually buying up the level 2 booze of travel before going in for, well, anything else? I'm completely fine with it because you know you're going to be seeing a lot of fights and you don't have any of those tower sub creeps or maybe perhaps a, a bit unreliable to go to, so uh, I am a big fan of the Boots of Travel level 2 early on the Tinker, simply because this allows you to be a lot more effective in early skirmishes. I suppose it will also help out when you get a bounty hunter, you don't go, just go directly to him. Or even the clockwork who's walking around with an invis room but can't find any of secret. But they're mostly on top. With this dire observer ward, they're still sitting on the cliff. Actually, I say that, it now times out. Uh, they had really good vision to go in for this tower. So it has to be redone by Puppy, who's coming down now. And if he's recalling in the troops. The Radiant Tower, they should jump in from S4. Requiem, and they want to blow up here. Decent damage, enough to kill him. Well, it looks like a will be. Fears out for the count. Some out of the tree lines. I also Ooh. open up. Easy! Just pops the bounty as well as the Tinker and goes for more. The Cox from Universe will keep him out. But the damage has already been done to both the tier 2 tower as well as the heroes of EG. Yeah, later on to the game, the Scythe the Vice constant control against the Animage is a counter to him in a way, but in this part of the game, Animage just trumps Tinker every single time. Once he starts throwing out some of that mana, a big man void will almost instantly kill him. Uh, now the tier 3 tower almost gone. No fortification available for evil geniuses. They buy back over on this vent. They want to try and hold Universe again with a cog push on the enemy. But he's still also got Aegis Immortal. Cora pick him up and Fear! Big jump in with the Stormbolt. Zyger to back it back up. He'll still end up dying. But for what cost? You've actually lost Fear for 70 seconds. Artesi is right in the base. Jumps in for the double kill on the Dazzle. They will finish up the melee racks. The only lane they could go to is bottom. Because this tier 2 tower still survives in the mid. And Backdoor regen will protect it, but they're going to push it anyway. They feel so comfortable that they just leave S4 to that top lane to finish off that last ranks. They're even running through the tier two, which they should take, but Tinker's actually going to try and make a play here. He jumps in, but Artizi's already there. S4 moving the front lines once again. The nice Cog pushing him back. Universe, great positioning. And the oh, boy explodes the mail as well as Owie. Two on the sideline again. It's a double double man. Oh, GG! The Void is big, and Secret is shoving EG down into it. Two games to one, and will EG be denied once again here on the ESL1 Frankfurt stage? Secret, one win away from success. Again, Secret just providing that constant pressure. The rotations out from them was beautiful. They set up enough room for RTC to start getting ahead, and once he was able to lock onto that Battle Fury, you knew he was going to have an excellent game.